sing just a most wonderful time this week in revival. I'm Amen. in the move of the Holy Ghost sweeping through this place. And I want to say to the folks, uh, maybe you've not been here all week. And uh, if you've not been in the presence of the Lord, been somewhere else, you've missed out. Right. I mean, I'm telling you, I hear people say all the time, boy, we need revival, we need revival. Most times those folks that are saying that are the ones that will never show up when they have it. And I'm telling you, we've had it here. Let me say this, it's not Amen. over. Amen. We're coming back tonight. Amen. But I don't want to get that far ahead. We're here this morning. I tell you, I, I agree with the preacher. I've said it many times. There, there shouldn't even be no reason we have to schedule revival. I've always said when we, when we since we started pastoring, it ought to be revival meeting every time you get in the house of God. And when you grow in the Lord and you're maturing in the Lord and you leave the church house and you go back out into the real world to your workplace and you go out to the secular places, you ought to be a walking, living, breathing revival. Everywhere you go, you ought to be so red hot and on fire for the Lord that the devil, he's so intense. He don't even want to come around you. Right. Hey. He knows you've got something within you. Yes. He knows you've got a power in oh. you. He knows you he got something within you that the world didn't yield. Satan's kingdom didn't give it to you. But you got it from above. I'm talking about Holy Ghost yes. and power. Yes. Glory to God. I'm glad I got it tonight. I'm glad. I've been lost in that power. And I wouldn't take nothing for it. And sometimes you just need a refueling. Sometimes you just got to pull in that spiritual uh, gas station and refuel and get fuel back up. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'll testify. I, this week I can testify of so many things. I've, I've received the healing. I've received yes. deliverance. Yes. I've received a, a restoration of joy. I tell you what, I don't know how you may feel that for the service this morning, but I tell you what, I believe I can preach all day. I believe I can preach all night. Yes. I, I, just want to, I will not just hear, but I'm here all over. We're going to go hallelujah. That's what the word of God will do when it's preached in power and conviction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not only that, but when the people receive it right. as it is the word of God. Boy, it's good, isn't it? Right. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God will get on down in your physical body. It'll go down in your bones and the marrow and the joints. And it'll heal you. Hallelujah. And I'm glad of that this morning. Let me say it today. Glad that you're here. If you're visiting with us, we welcome you. Let me say it. Encourage you tonight. Come back be with us 530. We're going to go out of here in a Holy Ghost blowout meeting tonight. And we're going to have a great time in the Lord. I, I know the... Uh, from what I heard, all of uh, Freedom Hill Church, they're coming up to be with us tonight. Uh, I believe Brother Nick said he's going to talk to Pittman Valley. They're going to bring some of their church down tonight. And we want you, Grace Union, to be here. Hallelujah. That's one thing for visitors to come. But it's, it's another thing for the members to be here and support your local church. And support the things of God. It's not that you're just showing up to let everybody see you. No. But you're dedicated to God. Amen. When you're dedicated to God, you'll be dedicated to the things of God. That's right, man. Amen. Oh. I'm telling you, there's nothing like, like it when you're living in victory. That's right. Amen. Well, no. Praise God. There's nothing like it when you're living in victory. I'm not talking about living on emotionalism or no. sensationalism. I'm talking about when you're living in the spirit of God. Right. We've got victory. Hallelujah. Let's stand all over the building. And uh, last night there was a special time. The Lord led us in this place. And uh, we we got this old American flag out. And we put it down here. And we gathered around that flag as it represents the great nation that we live in. And we had prayer over this nation last night. And I'll tell you, I believe those prayer bells rung in heaven. Because we had a group of prayer warriors here that knew what the... What prayer means, hallelujah, and prayed in faith. And I'm telling you, we need this Tuesday. We need to get out to the election place. We need to get out to the voting place. If you're tired of seeing the corruption, if you're tired of seeing the, the defilement of this nation, you need to get there, hallelujah, get everything. I know probably 
already irritated and you're going to be even more irritated when the message goes forth uh, this morning and people say well you know you should bring politics in the church you shouldn't preach about politics well somebody should have told John the Baptist that yeah. before he went to the king That's right. somebody That's should have it. told Jeremiah that when God raised him up and said I have appointed you over the kingdoms yeah. and over the nations to tear down to root out yeah. to pull down yeah. and throw down yeah. and to build and to deceived by the lies of the devil right. because Amen. God takes great notice of what goes on in a nation. Amen. And it's time for the righteous to stand up Amen. and be accounted yes. for against Amen. the wickedness and the evil of the things that's going on in this great nation that we live in. It's time to get out of the old petty stuff that's going on. It's time to get hooked up to something that's real. What do you mean by getting hooked up? I'm talking about getting our hand attached to the gospel plan. And don't look back, glory to God. Don't you want to be fit for the kingdom of heaven? I said, don't you want to be fit for the kingdom of heaven? Then hold on to that plan. Turn you around. Hallelujah. Don't let the pleasures of this world turn you around. Get in this thing. Get committed to the Lord. Get dedicated to the Lord. You'll be blessed. Hallelujah. He rewards them that diligently seek Him. I'm telling you, it's time to get out of the ministry. Time to get out of the pain and realize that He's the God that can mend broken hearts. And let's get in this thing called joy. The river of joy. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give the king. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we thank you today that even though we're unholy, that there is a holy representation, Lord, upon us today and within us. And he's your son, Jesus Christ. He's our representative, our mediator, our great high priest in the heavens. And Lord, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving and praise. Lord, we thank you for this week. Lord, you poured out your spirit. And Lord, we've experienced a real Real true revival. And God, I pray that it will be a revival that will stick in our hearts. That we won't soon forget it, Lord. Your mighty hand of power. And I pray, Lord, that it stirs our hearts so strongly that, God, nothing else in this world will matter except, Lord, serving you and yielding ourselves to you. And, Lord, we thank you today for this church. I thank you for this people, God. I thank you, Lord. Lord, for the hearts of the people uh, that love you and worship you. Uh, and Lord, I praise you today uh, that God, you're so good. Uh, Lord, you've been so good to us and you loved us so much. Uh, that Lord, when we were sinful and out of the way, uh, that God, in due time, you sent your son, Jesus, uh, that came to this earth. Uh, and let us ever be mindful of that sacrifice uh, and that price that was paid, uh, that we can have liberty and freedom in the spirit. Uh, and I thank you, Lord, that he didn't stay dead, uh, but you raised him up, Lord, that glorious morning. Uh, and, Lord, I thank you, as the old song says, uh, that he's not going to stay gone, uh, but he's coming back soon uh, for his people. Uh, and this morning, we want to be ready. Uh, we want to be watchful and praying. Uh, and this morning, God, I thank you for each one that's made their way out uh, to this service today. Uh, and I believe, God, you've ordained the word. Uh, Lord, if we'll receive it and accept it in faith uh, that God it will work effectually in our lives uh, and it will change our thoughts and our minds and our hearts uh, that we would better live for you God and serve you uh, and that our lives would be well pleasing in your sight. Uh, God we pray today over oh, every need that's in this building. Uh, we pray that God today you would touch every heart and every life uh, and Lord above all if there's anyone in our midst that's never been born again uh, that today would be the day God they would receive that glorious transformation and they would never be the same again in Jesus name Lord touch us today and ever draw us closer to you Lord as we draw nigh to you Lord you promised you would draw nigh to us and we have that desire today God we want to draw nigh to you because Lord we know if we draw nigh to you as close as we can get to you that leaves 
strength and no room to come in between us. And so, God, we want to walk with you every step in this life. And, God, today I pray over every struggle, over every mountain, every storm that puts souls uh, may be facing today uh, and I pray that God you would drive away uh, the dark clouds uh, and speak peace uh, to the storms of life uh, and Lord today we ask you to anoint uh, like never before the singing, the music and the preaching uh, and anoint the invitation time uh, and most important time uh, as millions upon millions stand in the valley of decision uh, that today Lord that decision would be made uh, the better serve you uh, to be saved and born again. Uh, Lord, we love you with all that we have. Uh, and we give you praise as we worship you. Uh, and we give you adoration, Lord, from our hearts. Uh, Lord, we love you so much. Lord, I love you so much. You've been so good. Lord, when it seemed like we were finished and down and out, you came by just on time. And Lord, you made a way when it seemed to be no way. And we thank you this morning that we've got victory. Now, Lord, send a breakthrough this morning. Send a breakthrough. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord Jesus a mighty hand this morning. If there's anyone who wants to sing in the choir, come on, don't, don't be bashful, don't be shy. Most of the folks around here, they're not bashful, they're not shy. Hallelujah, so you're not going to get embarrassed. Just come on up, join the choir and sing. Hallelujah. Hey, 404, this morning, sing from your heart to the Lord.
Give God what's right and not what's left. Amen. Amen. Not too late. Amen. 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 Lord, most of all, and that was your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, as with that thought in mind, as we give to the work of your kingdom this morning, oh. I pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver and multiply and increase it in abundance. And we ask you it all in Jesus' name. We also ask you this morning, Lord, that you would give us wisdom as the church, how to use these funds and where to use them, Lord, according to advancing that kingdom that you are building. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, once like a bird in the sun, I pray for freedom from my sorrow.
let me run. Let me run. I mean, run. Couldn't wait to get to hear the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, I know we do this every Sunday, but I think we ought to let these young folks know how much we love them. How much we appreciate them. How much we show them. They're not beautiful. Take a lot of effort 
to get all that back, right? So we have to be, yeah, that's right. So we have to be very careful with the words that we say and make sure that our words are spreading love and that, <coughs> that Jesus is happy with the words that we speak, right? All right, let's pray this morning. God, this morning we thank you um, just for the kids this morning, God, and for their, their attention and excitement, God. Um, I just pray that, that you'll um, just use something that we talked about this morning, God, to to just remind them this week that that it's so easy <coughs> it's so easy God to share your love with other people God but it's it's just as easy to, to let something slip God to maybe um, to hurt someone's feelings or make someone feel sad um, and so I pray that they will um, as they get older especially just continue to to think before they say things, God, that they will consider the feelings and the thoughts of other people, and that you will, that you will help encourage them to make to make good choices and to be just to be good people, God, because we know that that you call us to be a light for you, and we pray that we can use our words to just to spread your light and your love. Be in the service this morning, God. Be with Josie. Bring the message this morning. And be with us and we all leave here and we'll bring us back to the beginning next time. In your name we pray. Amen.
stage hand here. And we got some of the, I, I may be prejudiced for this church. We got some of the finest talent and singers. Don't you think so? thereof. 
Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished, meaning that Belshazzar had seen he didn't realize what it was but he had seen there in the palace he seen the mighty finger of one whom he had never seen before it was the same finger that rolled in the sand when they brought the accusers brought the woman taken in adultery it's the same finger that wrote in the sand I'm told about it was the hand of almighty God that appeared in that palace that appeared in that place hallelujah where they ruled the nation I'm praying today that the hand of God would reach down in the White House that would reach down in the Congress reach down in the representatives hallelujah and would write on the wall the handwriting hallelujah when they Sits, hallelujah. Not on the pains of this world. Uh, and realize, Lord, that this nation is in so much trouble. But God, I believe it today. Uh, there is enough of the blood bought church, uh, spirit filled, that are praying today uh, for the tide to turn. Uh, and so, God, we ask you to use this word that you have given uh, as a mandate, God, uh, that would shake us to the core of our hearts and our standing. And realize, Lord, there is nothing. Uh, not one single thing in this world uh, more important than serving you uh, and living the will that you have for us to live. Uh, and Lord, we thank you and praise you for it this morning. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, uh, I ask these things that all God's people said. Amen. amen and amen. Let's give the Lord uh, one more big praise.
word? He said, yes, I do. He got in there and he started voting on the abortion and everything else. I, that was nothing but a blatant lie. I look at the Democrat Party. I see a party that has only three things on their agenda. They may spew a bunch of lies and tell you everything, but they stand for abortion. I'm talking about the murder of innocent babies. And if you think I'm going to sit down and keep silent, you've got another thing coming. Somebody's got to stand for the voice that can be heard. It's murder. And if you stand with it, you are as guilty as they are. Amen. The second thing, easy to, easy to tell the platform what they stand. The next one they stand is transgenderism. If you're a man, you can be a woman. If you're a woman, you feel like it. Now we've gone so far. You see what happens when God is left out. We get crazy. Amen. We get insane. Amen. Now we've got people walking around with cat ears and cat tails and they think they're cats. And now even right around close to home, I believe it's Madison County High School, they've got litter boxes in the bathrooms. If you wake up one morning and you feel like a cat, and you need to go to the bathroom and get in that litter box. Somebody asked me here, well, back, what would you do uh, if your children come home uh, and somebody persuaded them and brainwashed them, they were cats, uh, and they started acting. I said, well, I'll tell you what I do. After I get done putting a leather to their hind end, uh, I, I set a bowl of milk outside, and I set some pieces of bread out in the bowl, and I tell them to get out there on their hands and knees and start eating like a cat. Hallelujah. We've gone insane. Why? Because God is It's up to the church. Amen. Amen. The same is we've got people in the church that's standing with these things. You know why? Because they think, they say, I love God. I love the things of God. But then when it comes down to the political realm, that love for God stops and they love the agenda, the evil agenda that's being pushed. Right. Honey, I've got to say it again. We need to love the things God loves and hate the thing God hates. I want to stand before you one day. And say, I, I, I didn't do all I should have done. I want to stand before him saying, I've done what I could do. I stood for the word. I stood for righteousness. I stood for your holiness. I tried to make a difference. We need to rise up and make a difference in this nation. We need to rise up and stand for God. That's their agenda. Yep. All three of those things, that's all they care about. Yep. And if they could push it in the school systems, push it on your children. Let me tell you something, I may not be at the school, but I can teach them what's right at home. Right. And when they get to the schoolhouse, if a teacher says something about what they're talking about, about Jesus, I've got every right to have a parent-teacher conference. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, it doesn't make much difference. That's baloney. Amen. Honey, you go in there prayed up. Amen. You go in there filled up with the Holy Ghost and put the fear of God in some of these devils that's working in these places. I'm telling you, you'll make a difference. Hallelujah. The church has set back too long. The church has stood back too long. Spirit, I feel there's a lot of churches today. Hallelujah, a lot of church folk. I'm talking about real deal, genuine. They love the Lord, they're spirit filled. Let me tell you something. We've been backed up in the corner, but when you get the real blood bought church, right. you get them backed up in the corner. Hallelujah, let me tell you, the greatest weapon we've got is the gift of prayer. Let me tell you something, if God be for me, 
reject that knowledge. Uh, God said, I will also reject you. Uh, Psalms 94, 20 and 23 uh, says, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, uh, which frameth mischief by law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous, uh, and they condemn the innocent blood. Uh, yes. Oh, but what I like what the David said, hallelujah. He said, But uh, be you tea, uh, the Lord is my defense. Yes. Uh,
express their true faith in a God who is the God of all liberty and all freedom. That's how we got these words, liberty and freedom. Our forefathers came up with it. They didn't care about Democrats. They didn't care about Republicans. All they cared about was living a life that was pleasing to Almighty God. trying to get away from something. They were looking for something. They were trying to find something. They were trying to find the freedom to worship in the way that the Word of God says that we need to worship. Those pilgrims who came to Plymouth Rock, they came to this land, they joined together in what we know as the Mayflower Compact. Right. How many ever heard of that? Yeah. Hallelujah. I, I, I will bore you with education, but I'm tying this into the Word of God this morning because it's the truth. When they came over to the Plymouth Rock, they joined together and they got together the Mayfire Compact. All of this was in 1620. Let me read you the words of that Mayfire Compact. Listen to this. Here's what they said when they got to these shores. In the name of God. Amen. That's what they opened up with. In the name of God, having undertaken for the glory of God and for the advancement of the Christian faith, we do solemnly and mutually in the presence of God. We covenant and combine ourselves together. What these settlers were saying when they came, they said we came here for the glory of God and we came here for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why they came to this right. land. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, then about 23 years later, <coughs> as more and more came to this land, these shores of very New England, they formed a confederation called the New England Confederation. And this, what I'm about to read to you, was the first written constitution of these groups that met together. The New England Confederation Constitution says this, Whereas we all came into these parts with one and the same end and the same aim, namely to advance the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. And to enjoy the liberties of the gospel in purity and in peace. So America was founded by men and women who acknowledged that Almighty God is the creator. Not only is he creator, he's a giver of life. Not only is he the giver of life, he's a sustainer of life. He's the provider of life. He's not the God that gives you the liberty to take a baby who he has created in a mother's womb and rip them out of that womb and murder them. No, he's the giver of life. He's the author of life. He's the blesser. They were looking for his righteousness to exalt. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let me say this about those folks. I know I'd say because they were human just like me. This wasn't a perfect group of little people that Christians that came over. But what they were, they were a group of people that acknowledged God. We've got a leader, we've got a president, vice president, the White House staff, a Congress that don't even acknowledge God. Today. That's right, amen. And they will love to separate you from him. Hallelujah. Now, that Declaration of Independence, you know what I'm talking about? That was declared on July the 4th, 1776. Here's what that Declaration of Independence says. It said, we hold these truths. These truths. Amen. That's what they're talking about. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And not only are they created equal, but they are endowed by their creator. Endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let me tell you, that day when they wrote that up, they just didn't get together and thought that sounded good. You know how they got together and come up with that? They had a prayer meeting. Amen. Amen. Read your history. I mean, read some true history. 
they got together and had a prayer meeting. And these 56 signers that signed that Declaration of Independence in that room that day, you know, there was a there was a debate as to how that Declaration of Independence would be written. But then Benjamin Franklin. How many have ever studied on Benjamin Franklin? Amen. You ought to study his life sometime. Yeah. A man that loved the Lord. Here's what Benjamin Franklin stood and said in the midst of those men. Here's what he said. Gentlemen, if it is true that not one single petal from any flower falls to the ground without escaping God's attention, will the distress of this nation go unheeded? Right. Amen. Glory to God. I don't believe it will, do you? So here's what he said, the conclusion of the whole matter. He said, let us therefore determine to seek the face of Almighty God. Yeah. Boy, don't you want some leaders up there yeah. like that, man? Yeah. When you got trouble, when you got distress, when you got the money calls all around, don't you want a leader of a nation yeah. who's going to stand and say, you know what? Let's quit all this legislature. Yeah. Let's quit all this investigating. Let's quit all this stuff uh, and let's seek the face. Suggested that these 56 men, those signers of the Declaration of Independence, that all of them, that they were there, would go to their knees and begin to pray and seek the wisdom of God. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Let me read something to you. I, I, I'll get back to that story in a minute. But in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 33, I believe it is. Isaiah 33, let me say this to you. All three branches of our government, they wouldn't just thought up because somebody was smart. They wouldn't just thought up because somebody thought it was a good idea. They were divinely ordained and appointed by God. Yes, amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the executive branch. I'm talking about the legislative branch. And I'm talking about the judicial branch. Right. All came through Isaiah 33, verse 22. And the word of God says there, for the Lord is our judge. Yes. Yeah. That's the judicial, hallelujah. Yeah. And the Lord is our lawgiver. Yeah. That's the legislative Amen. branch, hallelujah. And the Lord is our king. Amen. That's the executive branch. Yeah. That was the verse that our founders founded, the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the executive branch of this nation. So this nation, and their history tells me, this nation was founded on two things, prayer and the word. When they came to this nation, it's like there was a new birth. Yeah. Hallelujah. God birthed this nation. <laughs> now, I don't know why that America's here. I don't find it in the Bible. <laughs> but what I do believe is that God has blessed this nation because of what she was founded on. Amen. And now we got a group of people that are drunken and intoxicated with yes. power. They're intoxicated with demonic spirits. Yes. And I'm telling you today, if the church don't stand, we're going to be in trouble. That's right. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Now we get down to <laughs> old Belshazzar. Down there in that old Babylonian nation. Yep. They had went down there. You know, they took the people of God captive. When they went into Jerusalem, they ransacked the temple. They tore the temple down. They were so evil and ungodly of a nation. They went in that temple of God. They took all the sacred vessels that were used for worship and sacrifice. They took the lampstand that was sitting over there in the corner. That was sitting right next to where that finger began to write. That was the lampstand that was in the temple of God. They took the sacred vessels, the golden cups, and they desecrated the things of God. And we've got a White House right now. We've got a leadership in this nation that is desecrating the things of God. And they're shoving God out of everything. Hallelujah. Oh, but let me tell you, glory to God, Bill Sanders. They went in there and they started having this big drinking feast, a big party. They were celebrating. I know right now it looks like they got the upper hand. 
I know right now it looks like uh, things are bleak. Uh, I know right now it looks like it's not going to get any better. Oh, that's the way it looked to Belshazzar. They thought they were on top of the world. Uh, they took those things of God uh, and they brought them into that drunken peace. Uh, they began to drink their alcohol straight out of those sacred vessels. Uh, they was they was blasting in the name of God. Uh, Oh, but all of a sudden, oh, Belshazzar looks over and he sees something on the wall that began. See, I think the church needs this kind of revelation that will wake us up. That's right. Hallelujah. And that finger began to write on that wall. Hallelujah. Belshazzar, the Bible says, uh, his knees began to tremble. I'm praying for a writing to be on the wall uh, right there in the yes. Oval Office. Hallelujah. Oh, and oh, the knees of our president would begin to shake uh, yes. in fear and reverence uh, of this hand that's yes. writing on the wall. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so... Belshazzar looked. He didn't know what was going on, but he knew that there was something out of the natural that was taking place. I believe he began to realize what he was doing in the face of God. We've got leaders today spitting in the face of God. Yeah. It's gone down, trickled down in our school system. Yeah. We are a country that's full of lawlessness right now. Yeah. They're letting out millions of criminals out on the streets. Yeah. You know what they're doing? Going right back out and murdering and raping. Yeah. There was a lady up in New York in a nice part of New York this week uh, that was jogging out in the park uh, yeah. and a man who should have been locked away for life uh, for the crimes he committed had been left out by these liberal Democrats uh, who are full of lawlessness. Amen. 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 Go with a God. Right. Hallelujah. Now you may try to corner me today and debate me. Let me go ahead and say you better have the word of God. Before you quarter me, hallelujah. Amen. Oh. I'm not giving you an opinion. I'm giving you the word from God. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory, Amen. hallelujah. You need to wake up and see who you're saying. Hallelujah. Somebody says, well, you think that? No, I don't think much of the Republican Party is that much better. Right. Matter of fact, if I, I may go in, I thought about yesterday. I may go in and change my uh, status to independent. <laughs> And some of them ain't much better either. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. It's going to take the church. Amen. It's the Republican Party that's going to be the Savior. Amen. It's going to be the church that's going to rise up and declare the Savior. Amen. Lady was went out jogging in a nice part of New York suburb. Went out there jogging through the park. A man who was laying out there in wait. Uh, when she came by, jumped out and beat her almost to death. Uh, raped her right out there in the park. Uh, this man should have been locked up. Uh, he should have been locked up for life for the crimes he committed. But we got a leadership that's so far away from the things of God. There is no justice system. I got news for you that we don't say have a justice system in this nation. Let me tell you something, my friend. I can't say it enough. The church better rise up. I, if you got, let me. Okay, let me ask this question. Is there not a call? Amen. Amen. Right. Hmm, hallelujah. Well, Shazer, he began to tremble. He brought in all these people he thought could help him. But he brought in the wrong sources. Amen. But somebody said, but there's a man down there. There's a man down there in that nation. He's a man of God. He stood up one day in front of Nebuchadnezzar. He didn't want to be the name that Nebuchadnezzar named him. He even wanted to change his name because he didn't want to be identified with that group of evil people. He's a man down there that knows the Lord, loves the Lord. And not only that, he's a praying man. That's right. He, he can tell you what that handwriting says. I thank God for preachers today. Amen. We've heard one this past week. who has got a holy boldness and a backbone to stand. Yes. They don't care what people will say about them, what they about. And I praise God for preachers like that right. who don't water down the gospel. Amen. And they realize and know enough to know they're not called to make friends. They're not called to make buddies. They're called to preach the yes. eternal Amen. word of God Amen. and Amen. preach it just Amen. like it is. writing that's on the wall. And during all this time, God had been taking notice of this nation. And he's taking notice of this nation right now. That's right. Amen. He's taking notice. 
and judgment will come. Amen. There's a day of reckoning. But Daniel walked in there in that, in that palace. They were intoxicated. Yep. The alcohol was flowing. And Daniel went in there. Hallelujah. And Daniel just said, he said these words, let me go back to Daniel. Over in Daniel chapter 5, the last part of it. Here's what Daniel said the Lord wrote on that wall. And you better take heed <laughs> to it. Hallelujah. Daniel said down in Daniel chapter 5, verse 24. Let me read from there. He said, Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this was this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written, Mene, Mene, to kill the person. And this is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom, and he has finished it. Meaning that, hallelujah, right outside of those fortified walls of Babylon stood the Medes and the Persians waiting to come in and ransack the nation. That's why I say the rubble of Babylon ought to cry out a warning to you and I today as a nation. They stood outside those walls while they were in there in that drunken party. No thought about God. Some of you done turned me on. You done forgot about some of the things that have been preached this morning. But let me tell you this. We better take heed and we better do it now. Yes. Hallelujah. They stood outside that wall. And while they were in there having that drunken party, God done looked down and he had done weighed out the name and name. That's said with emphasis. He had done took notice of that nation just like he has America. Yes. And that handwriting that was on the wall, that the name means to number. God had numbered their days. That's right. Amen. Amen. God had numbered the days of that evil nation. Hallelujah. And he was getting, they were getting ready to realize that night that it's God that sets up kings. It's God that sets up nations and brings them down. Hallelujah. That is the righteousness of God that exalts a nation. And it said, Mene, Mene, that said twice for emphasis. To kill. That means thou art weighed in the balances and you're found wanting. Meaning you've not measured up to God's divine scale. You've not measured up to God's standard. I'm asking you this morning the same question Billy Brown asked many years ago when he preached a message. Is the handwriting on the wall today in America? Is the handwriting on the wall? Do you not feel the urgency for the gospel They've been found lacking. And then Perez, you person, he said, Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians, meaning God was going to take away their power. God was getting ready to divide that kingdom. Let me tell you, there's a price to pay when you don't live for the Lord. There's a price to pay when a nation. Let me tell you, God looks at an individual, God looks at a home, and God looks at a nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. We've got to remember the nation that forgets God. Going to be turned into hell. Turned into the grave. Won't you stand with me this morning all over the building. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me in Ecclesiastes 12, 14. That God is going to bring every work into judgment. And every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Jesus said in Luke 12, 2, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Neither anything that's hid that shall not be known. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Listen, we've got a lot of folks, as David said in Psalms 10, 11. A lot of folks that say in their heart that God is forgotten. He don't see the condition we're in. We can live anywhere. Way we want to do anything we want to. Nothing's happened yet. We're all right. Let me tell you, the only reason any nothing has happened, and the only reason that Russia hasn't come in uh, and bombed this this nation uh, into a dust pile, the only reason that China hasn't oh hacked into our computer system and our banking system and tore this nation apart is because the grace of God yeah. is still.
pray for this church, Father. That, Lord, this church can have such a glow going from you. That it's the glory of you. Your glory, your power. Not anything of me or nothing else or no one else. But, God, that it's you.
morning about five o'clock, and I was a nervous wreck, Brother Jackson. Because I knew if I go in there and preach what thus saith the Lord, this type of message, it would maybe just empty some of this place out. And I'm going to tell you what I'm thankful for you. I see nothing but hungry hearts all over this building. You don't know what a blessing that is. Amen. And it confirms to me again and again, Satan is nothing but a liar. That's right. Amen. Amen. I didn't get nothing thrown at me. Granny, there's no bullets flying. And no tomatoes being thrown. I'll tell you why it is, because you love the word of God. Let me tell you something, church. You're a special group of people. You're a special group of people. And you just don't know how honored I am to be the pastor of this church. The people that's come in hungry, loves the Word of God. The people that's been here since we've been here, you've been here for years. And I look at Sister Joyce back there. David and David, Emily stood the test of time. It looked like this church was going to crumble and be no more. But God's never finished. But I got news for the devil, it ain't over. Till it's over. Not till that time comes soon. I told somebody when I first started here, I, 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 I said, I was telling somebody else, I said, how, how is it over there? I had been here for probably two or three weeks. I had been here as pastor for that two or three weeks. Somebody said, how is it? I said, I'll tell you what I found. I said, the Lord's given me pretty good discernment through the Spirit. They don't take long to pick up on people when you got this discernment of the Spirit. I said, I'll tell you what I see. When I stand up and preach in that pulpit, I look out. Because the Lord just designed me. I don't want to be like another preacher. I don't want to be like somebody. I want to be what God wants me to be. And I want to preach the way God wants me to be. When I first started preaching, I thought, man, i got to be like this one, like that. And then when I stepped into the anointing God gave for me, I realized, boy, I like this better than I do trying to be like somebody else. Amen. And I said, told that guy, I said, I'll tell you what I said. I said, I realize the harder you preach, the more they love. Amen. The harder you preach, the more they love. You know why? You love the word of God. And you know, spiritually minded people will understand spiritual things. Amen. But when you're away from God, that's what gets you mad. That's what gets you upset. Yes. But when you know the Word of God and it's in you, you know that whatever's being preached is true. That that's right. right. Amen. Everything you heard today was true. Not because I preach it, but because it's the Word of God. Be praying for this nation. We need, we need a winner mention. God. We need a Holy Ghost invasion. Amen. We don't need a Russian invasion. We need a Holy Ghost invasion. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, I tell you, I had a good time with you all. Amen. I tell you, I had a good time with you all. I had a good time with you all. Time with you. Glory to God. Tonight we're going to be back at 5:30. I encourage you if you come and you get to come early. If you can, we'll have the doors open. I, I don't know what the attendance will be like. I'm hoping it'll just be we'll have to open it. These windows will open them. Yeah. 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 Open them. Somebody said, well, it's raining. Well, we've been told we hear the sound of a moment of rain. Don't you want it to come in? We have to we'll open these windows up. We have to we'll knock these walls out. God will provide a way we can build them back. Pray we can just build them wider. Hallelujah. But come tonight and, and uh, be expected. Be prayed up before you get. Don't wait to get here to get prayed up. Get it before you get here. Right. And then you can enjoy it from the beginning to the end. I can't tell you enough. I love you so much. I could. I just right here. I look back there and see my life standing there. And go out there. Uh, you want something special?